So should you buy a Toyota Hybrid, new or used? A recent comment from a, from a viewer asked me, hey, do you, some people say absolutely buy them, they're the best thing, and some people say run away, don't buy them, don't buy a used one, they're horrible. Now there are two huge YouTubers that I watch and respect and actually love their content. Scotty Kilmer and Chris Fix, they both made statements about hybrids that contradict each other. So, I am going to give you my humble two cents on this matter. As a Toyota Master Diagnostic Technician with over a decade of experience, hybrid certified, exclusively working on these cars, from the day they roll out of the factory till the day they have 300, 400,000 miles, I'm going to give you my input on this. But before we get started, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Without further ado, let's dig right into the subject. Possibly the most controversial question. Are hybrids reliable? Can you keep them 10, 15, 20 years, put hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles on them. And the answer to that is yes and no. Let's, let's dig into this a little bit more. So, the main thing with hybrids is that everybody seems to be worried about, they all, everybody researches and freaks out about, and this and that, is the high voltage battery. Everything's, everybody's so afraid that this high voltage battery would fail, this is the end of my financial stability and now I have to be put, putting thousands and thousands of dollars to fix it and it'll never be right again and all that. Well, let me tell you the truth. Hybrid batteries, if maintained right, will have no problem lasting 100, 200, 300,000 miles. And as a general rule of thumb, it's a battery. It's, it's gonna have a life, just like your transmission, just like your engine. So your expectations for this battery are very important. If you're planning to just buy this car, drive it for 25 years, not do a single thing to it, just oil changes, you are mistaken. Go buy a gasoline Toyota and life is good. Have a wonderful day. However, the truth of these batteries is if you maintain them right, and we're gonna talk about maintenance in a second here. If you maintain them right, and if you follow some of the general precautions, things you should not do to them, they have no problem lasting at least 10 to 15 years and 100, 200, 300,000 miles. The number one cause, and I have said this on almost every single video that I have made that has the word hybrid next to it, you have to maintain the fan filter. I'm not gonna be scientific and how those batteries, hybrids, blah, all this mess. I'm not an engineer, I'm just a humble mechanic. Well, that's another channel. I'm just a humble person and I'm gonna tell you my experience. Batteries, any battery, whether it's the small 12 volt battery in your any car or the high voltage battery, it's a battery. It does not like heat. You warm it up too much, it's not gonna fail the next day, but the more you let it run warm, the lesser its life. And eventually the two will hit each other and battery fails, the end of that. The first thing you need to do, if you're considering buying one, especially a used one, you gotta look at that filter. That's your number one indication. Was this filter taken care of? Or was it neglected because the customer, the owner before you, didn't even know that there was such a thing? And even Toyota failed their customers, and not to fault of them, they just missed it. They did not put filters on these cars until later on. You go look at a 2004 to 2009 Prius. They did not come with a filter from the factory. It was just an open vent. In the back seat, innocent looking vent. People didn't think anything of it, covered it, 
boom, battery fails, battery fails, battery fails. And then second gen and first gen Prius were notorious for battery failures. I have replaced more batteries on second generation Prius than any other hybrid model combined. And it was because of this. It was around 2010 to, to 2012 when Toyota started putting filters and started saying, you, folks, you gotta maintain these filters is when battery life started going. Like it changed from every five to 10 years to it could really last a very long time. So maintenance is key here. Even if you buy a new one, you start from day one, cleaning that filter, changing that filter. They're all, most of them are very simple. You could, you don't even have to be a DIY mechanic to check it, at least check it. If not replace it and clean it right there, you're assuring yourself that this battery is going to last the most possible time. I cannot emphasize how important that is. Every other maintenance on the hybrid, not as vital as this one. It is super important. And you do this maintenance right, you will have no issue keeping that hybrid 10, 15 years, even 20 years, 100, 200, 300,000 miles. This is God honest truth, people. They're not horrible cars. They're actually marvels of technology. They're awesome cars. Some people hate them. Hate is a strong word, but for lack of a better word, they just don't like them. And guess what? This will take us into the next section. Should you buy one? Before you go running into a dealership, get in the car, drive it, do you even like how it drives? I, ha I get so many emails and comments and people asking me, both family, friends, why do hybrids engines shut off? I'm not gonna go into how hybrids work because we could be here for a couple hours and I'm sure you don't wanna look at me for a couple hours, but the basic idea is if the way hybrids run with the engine shutting, turning on, turning off, the whole nine yards, the noises they make when you brake, when you accelerate, when you reverse and this and that, if this bothers you, perhaps a hybrid is not for you. That's the number one thing. Do you like it? Do you like the way it drives? Yes, better gas mileage, all the benefits, but do you like how it drives? If it doesn't, walk away, we're done. It, it could be the best car in the world, but if you don't like it, we're done. That's the end of that conversation. The second thing is, if you are not going to be driving a lot, let's say you're going to be putting three to 4,000 miles a year, don't buy a hybrid. Batteries don't like to sit. When you let that battery sit, you're asking for trouble. It's going to fail prematurely because it's not getting its cycles of charge and discharge and it's going to fail just like a normal 12 volt battery. So if you're going to drive the car normally or high miles, absolutely buy it. If you have a very heavy foot and you always like to be flying 100 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour on the highway, it's not going to be very efficient. You're not going to get the gas mileage that you want. Ideally, you want to have a 50-50 drive or more towards city driving. 50% city, 50% highway. You do that, you're actually gonna get your money's worth out of the hybrid's efficiency. If you're always flying down the highway, 90, 95 miles an hour, they're not gonna be efficient and, and you're just wasting your money. You could have gotten a gasoline car that drives better, faster, and more efficiently at high speed. So it is very important that you decide why do you want to buy one? Are you buying it for the gas efficiency? Then you need to think, is my driving gonna really reap the benefits of these efficiencies? Am I buying it to save the trees? That's up to you. I, I'm, not into, I'm not gonna decide that one for you. And the last but not least, and the number one reason you should not buy one, because they're cool. No, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Please, that's not a reason to buy a hybrid. And here are the number one reasons that you should not buy a hybrid and get good results with. Number one, if you find a very cheap hybrid, cheap, much cheaper than its comparable year and model, cheap is not good in hybrids, never. 
Don't buy the cheapest hybrid you can afford. Buy the most expensive hybrid you can afford because buy them you, when you're buying a used one, you start with the best one you can get your hand on, you can afford and you maintain it right. It's going to last a long time. You buy a bad one, trust me, you're going to have nightmare after nightmare after nightmare and the high voltage battery will be the least of your problems. They have other problems when neglected and they're horrendous, they're scary. You wait till somebody has to show you a bill for a hybrid transmission. You will never come near a hybrid again, but they're very reliable, but you neglect them and you don't maintain them, you're gonna see that bill. And I, I do not want you to see that bill because it's scary. Let's recap everything here. Is it a good idea to buy a hybrid? Yes and no. Yes, if you like it, like how it drives, if you're willing to continuously maintain it, it's not expensive, crazy maintenance, but you need to be involved in watching that filter. The minute it gets dirty, you clean it, you replace it, and you have no issues. Are you willing to replace the high voltage battery at some point? Wait a minute, did you just say that? Yes. High voltage battery, $3,000, your simple math. And I'm the worst mathematician in the world, but let's try to keep up with my horrible math. Hybrid battery, three to four thousand dollars. That's a scary number. That, that makes most people closest video run. We're not buying a hybrid, forget it. But bear with me here. Did you know that hybrid brakes last 100 to 150,000 miles easily? So you're not replacing brakes every 30, 40,000 miles. Did you know that hybrids do not have an alternator, do not have a starter? Two less things to go wrong. Did you know that most modern hybrids, they don't have a drive belt? There's no belt to replace. It's just electric water pump, electric AC compressor. It's pretty cool, isn't it? There's a lot of things that don't exist in hybrids that people are not aware of. All they see is high voltage battery, high voltage battery, very expensive, dollar signs, I'm walking away. No. You gotta, if you're buying a good hybrid, and especially if you're buying it new, it could easily last a very long time. You just gotta understand what you're getting yourself into. You gotta understand that there are certain maintenances you gotta do, and not expensive stuff. You gotta do these maintenances. You start early on taking care of that battery, it's gonna last a very long time while you are saving gas, not having to worry about a lot of common issues with gasoline cars and you're gonna keep that car for a very long time. So what are the best year hybrids to buy? This one is pretty simple. 2012 and up. These are the years where Toyota started using actual filters. However, you still gotta check that filter. That's your usual indication. Did the previous owner take care of it or he just drove it? Cause Toyotas last forever, you know? They don't. If you don't maintain them, they're worse than a lot of manufacturers because they have high quality parts that cost small fortunes when they do break of neglect. Please avoid the following hybrids. And I know there's somebody that's gonna watch this video who owns one of these cars and they love them and they're great and they're reliable and I am so happy that you have no issues with them. But good luck finding one like in, in good shape. Avoid, absolutely avoid, with big lettering. First generation Prius. They are very appealing because they're very cheap, they're the first hybrid, and, and you find them everywhere. Please avoid them. Most people that loved those Priuses and took care of them sold them a very long time ago. And the people that bought them, they know nothing about them, they neglected them, they took them to shady mechanics, they did all kinds of shady stuff to them. Don't. You're gonna have a headache if you're looking at the first generation Prius. Second generation Prius, unfortunately, while it's a great car, again, we go back to the same thing. People that take care of these Prius, second gen Prius, they still have them, they're not selling them. People that neglected them, they got rid of them. 
So all you have in the, in the buying pool right now are mostly terrible ones. Ones that have a shady half replaced battery that I don't know who, who worked on this car, who replaced this battery. Please don't buy a second generation Prius because it's cheap. Cheap is not always good when it comes to hybrids. You're much better off going to buy a regular Toyota. Chances are you can get better results out of it. So don't buy a cheap hybrid. There's no such thing. You're gonna have problems. If it was so good, it wouldn't be this cheap. The last one to avoid, and unfortunately this one, while a great car, but they're getting a little old. It was also an experimental hybrid, if you would. And the gas mileage is not justified. First generation Highlander hybrid. They're great cars, great SUVs, but the gas mileage is really not there. They had issues, they were usually neglected. I wouldn't buy it. I would actually look at 2012 and up hybrids. The Prius. Is the Prius the king of hybrids? Yes and no. This, uh, sorry, I mentioned this multiple times, but I want you to get the point here. The Prius is a specialty car. It is a test bed. It, was, it is the mother of hybrid cars. It is the first successful retail hybrid cars and possibly the best today. However, the Prius is a specialty car. It gets insane gas mileage. It is extremely efficient. It is a marvel of engineering. The current generation Prius is possibly the best hybrid there ever will be. I don't care about other manufacturers. Sorry, Toyota is king when it comes to hybrids. If you don't like the Prius because of its shape, its shape is very intentional it doesn't look like that just because oh we like to make it look odd no it's a very functional shape so it would get that efficiency if you're not big on the prius i highly i am i am one of those people honestly i will say it i don't like how priuses look they don't look ugly but they look different i don't like how they look but i think they're great cars however camry hybrid avalon hybrid prius v Prius C, Highlander Hybrid, RAV4 Hybrid, all these other hybrids, Sienna Hybrid that's coming up. These are normal cars that are hybrid. They have very efficient systems. They are super reliable when taken care of. I would not hesitate a second to go buy a Camry Hybrid right now. They're just awesome. The way they drive, they drive very normal. They don't have too much hybrid technology where it's overwhelming like the Prius. And if you maintain this car right, especially that hybrid filter, I have no doubt that you're gonna keep this car 10, 15, 20 years, 100, 200, 300,000 miles without any issues with a high voltage battery. People also ask, do hybrids have special maintenance? Do, are they more maintenance than a gasoline car? Again, yes and no. Yes, because they have the high voltage fan filter that we talked about that you need to regularly maintain. And they have an additional cooling system. But we're talking about chiclets here. We're talking about small costs, not huge things. Compared to the stuff that doesn't go bad on these cars or it doesn't even have to go bad, it's a win-win in this case. Hybrids are generally very, very low maintenance. I mean, the maintenance costs on a hybrid are considerably lower than a gasoline car. There are so many things that they do not have, alternator, starter, hydraulic power steering, and many other things that you'd be servicing on a regular gasoline car that you wouldn't be on a hybrid. Are these DIY cars? Can you fix it on your own in your garage? You guessed it, yes and no. Yes, if you're replacing brakes, a little water pump, anything related to the engine or the rest of the car. However, and I apologize, Chris Fix, I loved your video on how to replace the high voltage battery. 
anything to do with the high voltage system, you have to be very careful. Please, people. We go through some specialized training on how to handle the high voltage components, how to properly disable it, how to be safe around it, how, for lack of a better word, not get yourself killed. Not hurt, killed. That's, that's what you have to go for to become hybrid certified. Now, I will give you an example. People will say, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I can do this. Sure. When the transformer on your street goes out, blows out for whatever reason, do you call your power company or do you climb up there to replace it? Or that high voltage cable on the street? No, you don't. And why is that? When you answer that question, it is the same answer why you should not service the high voltage system on your hybrid without specialized training. And it's not rocket science training. If you're willing, you can take that training and understand what the dangers are. Otherwise, the car is DIY except the hybrid system, which for most part, if maintained right, you have no problem. And when it comes to the fan filter, which I talked about and I cannot talk about it enough, you absolutely can DIY that. And I actually encourage you to. That's very simple. In closing of this video, I'd like to say one thing. First, please do your research on hybrids. Don't listen to one source. Listen to 10 people, watch 10, 15 different videos. But the most important thing is, do you like the car? Are you willing to maintain it? And if you're buying a used one, what's this car maintained? Are you willing to replace a high voltage battery if you're buying an old one? It's not the end of the world. Remember, these cars are very reliable otherwise. You replace, you buy one cheap, that's not neglected, it just needs a battery, that's why it's cheap. You replace the battery, life is good. Yeah, it's an expensive battery, but to most people, believe it or not, it is a well-worthy investment. My personal recommendation, never use an aftermarket battery because I'm just gonna come out and say it. Yeah, sure, there are great companies out there with lifetime warranty, la, 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 la. However, these companies are not cheap. It's not like the original battery is $3,000. Oh, an XAB whatever company is 300 bucks. It's not. The original battery is 3,000. This company is 1,500 bucks. You're still paying a lot of money. I, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna spend 1,500, I have no guarantee that this battery is not gonna stop working in two years. You buy the original one, you know, because you just replaced your 15, 20 year old original one, you know it's gonna last. So I'll leave that one up to you. Food for thought, I suppose. I hope this video was helpful and informative for you. I hope you learned something new. I hope this helps you make a better decision whether you should buy a new or used hybrid or not. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think, or if you have any questions, you're also welcome to email me at thecarcarenet at gmail.com. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful day.